under what circumstances can you straw where you have not bestowed labor? It is, yes. Inheritance is one pure case, inheritance. If you have read the Bible, you will see genealogy, especially in the book of Matthew. We are just starting the book of Matthew and genealogy issues are critical issues because every man has a root. And the principle of inheritance is a principle that God respects. It's a principle that demons respect. So if you are called to, to reap where you have not sown, you are called to straw where you have not bestowed labor. That's the principle of inheritance. So you hear that his name is David, the son of Jesse. And sometimes people ask, whose son is he? We cannot understand him until we know his roots. So the issue of inheritance is a critical issue in, in the Bible. And just like we inherited blessings, there are also liabilities that are part of the cargo that we inherit across generational lines. Mm. I'm saying that the devil has embarked on several intelligent transactions in a bid to seek legitimacy in your bloodline, in your community, in your family, in context that you cannot be dissociated from, in context that you can only be released from by the implementation of the will of God that is captured in salvation. For instance, me, I was telling, I was telling a brother the other day, there is a place I go to pray in Lagos. That place doesn't sound like Lagos. You know, Lagos is very energetic. The place I'm talking about is calm. It's like a place that is not in Lagos that doesn't look like Lagos. So that's where I go to pray. And I discovered that it's very easy for me to hear God there. That's why I normally go there frequently. So the last time I was there, are you there? I didn't know my wife was praying. My wife was doing one dangerous prayer in my country. I was in my own prayer in Lagos. And I did not know that my wife included our, our family members, my own family members in the prayer. And they were representing our family. I was just going there to do my own prayer. Then I saw a vision. Just a few minutes after I started this prayer, I saw a vision. I saw myself, I saw our firstborn, I saw my elder brother, then I saw one of my cousins, and we were very old. Meanwhile, I don't need to tell you the prayers that my wife was leading, the other people to pray. Very powerful prayers, and the prayers were family-based. It was the result of the prayers that she was leading that I was receiving in my own prayer. When we now came back to discuss, because we discussed every night, that, okay, I prayed like this, this, this. So when we came back to discuss, we now discovered that the time when they were praying their own prayer coincided with the time when I was in my own prayer in Lagos. So it was easy to believe that it was a result of what they were praying that I was receiving. I knew my grandfather as an old man that was more than 100 years, was not using a cane to walk, he didn't use glasses to read. He had a straight back and he was very tall. I knew him for more In fact, he was looking for death. Where is death for him to die? When that man died, his descendants could not live more than half his age. He died about 100 and something. My dad died. My dad had an elder brother that died when he was nine. My dad had an elder sister that died before she was 60, that I knew her. My dad became the firstborn, not by birth, but by circumstances. Then he left the scene at 62. The next person that left the scene was 64. The next person that left the scene was 58. The next person that, so you see that there was no, no more strength to hit even 70. And when you notice that it is a pattern, are you there? Then it means an altar is involved. I will tell you the symptoms of how to detect the presence of an altar. One of which, and it's not for this week, one of which is 
a scientific pattern, a pattern that is becoming scientific because it's consistent. So when I went to Lagos to pray, I finished preaching one of my sessions in Wolfbeck and I did not go home. I went to my prayer. Yes, I went to my prayer. We finished that prayer 1 a.m. in the morning. The first scripture Baba quoted to me was, he that loveth his life will lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake will keep it. Then I saw that vision. Then he told me, because you are willing to exalt my purpose more than your own life, you will live long. And not just you only, the grace for long life in your family that necromancy snuffed out has been restored. That's why I saw old people. In the family. Meanwhile, this is my prayer or what I'm receiving was when I came to discover their prayer point, it was a product of their prayer effort that gave me the results that I got that night. Are you with me? So, could it be that my life was short, even as I was preaching to all of you? <laughs> oh, you are not following me. The verdict was already there in the realm of the spirit. It was just that I was not seeing it. Thank God for the interventions that took place and the transactions that took place. All of that was reversed. So, our Mashika came to visit me. What day is that? Was it yesterday? Huh? Day before yesterday. Say so you will live long. You know, I've heard that before. God told me, he brought the confirmation. So I began to wonder, what, what is this dealing around living long now? All of those dealings came from a transaction. It, may you not be quoting the scripture. If any man be in Christ, and then the poster of your obituary comes out. To enforce the will of God, you need an altar. We know it's God's will for you to live long. But the will of God will not just come to pass because it's God's will. It will come to pass because it's enforced. There are other wills that, that also implicate you that are not necessarily the will of God, but they have the potential of coming to pass if your priesthood does not stop it. Remember, remember, this physical world was given birth to from the spiritual world and it can be manipulated from that point. Have you ever taken inventory? When other people get promoted, it's easy. Your own, your own is always like this. Are you there? Okay, I need to tell you of my training. My training, I was trained in the faith block, the faith highway. We're trained to be faith teachers, faith preachers. So, I know how to declare and clear. <laughs> I know how to name and claim, but I've gone deep with God and I've found that some of the strategies we engage for results, they are not, they, are, they don't have sufficient stature to combat legalities. If a man is convicted of a crime by the Benue State Judiciary, are you there? You can't come and declare and set him at liberty. You can't name freedom. You are released. And that becomes the token of his freedom. A legal situation will be solved in a legal way. Are you there? So don't run away and just be declaring things. You will need to solve the problem the, the way the shape of the problem is. There are tools and utensils that we have in the new creation that are potent enough to, res to reverse verdicts that have been proclaimed over your lineage. I don't have time to take you on a journey and show you the city of Jericho, that a man placed a curse 
on that city. I said, the man that will rise to build the gate of the city, this is what will happen to him. And do you know that aeons later, aeons, somebody rose and attempted construction. It was at the cost of the person's child because there was a cost that was in the land. Even though his motives were, were motivated, he was motivated by God to begin the reconstruction. The fact that God motivated him did not, did not, did not, did not absorb him from the legality that existed in that context. It was with grieving and mourning that the foundations were laid. If a certain challenge is judicial in nature, the solution will be judicial in nature. That was why God did not just come to us and declare that all of you are born again in Jesus' name. The situation was a legal situation and God addressed that situation by a legal answer. Do you understand that? In the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 10, we see the two sides of redemption, the legal side and the organic side. The reason why redemption has a legal appendage is because the situation of departure that found expression making man need redemption was a judicial situation and the response of God would be a judicial response. In the law of the Bible, if an angel causes a problem, it's an angel that will solve the problem. If it is God that causes a problem, it will be God that will come to solve it. If, it is, if the problem was caused by the sons of God, it will take another generation of sons of God to solve the problem that the first sons of God set in motion. The way the problem was created, that is how the problem will be solved. Are you there? And I just wanted to bring to your notice several Bible-recognized realities that can be the basis of your being implicated, one of which is inheritance. Hi, you're already frowning. Inheritance, one of them. So a man went to, he stole his neighbor's bicycle and sold it. The neighbor went and consulted, consulted a DBA. Brought a DBA and placed a curse on the person that stole his bicycle. And this was the nature of the curse. If he eats rice, let him become sick and die. So the actual man that stole the bicycle ate rice and died. The son of that man who happens to be born again and was attending a Pentecostal church notices that whenever he eats rice, he becomes terribly sick. He went to consult the doctor. The doctor said, ah, ah, it's an allergy. So anything you are allergic to, it is medically advised that you should avoid it. So based on doctor's instruction, he avoided rice and lived considerably for a certain age. Then, a very senior man of God in this nation, he had the attention of that man of God and told him about his rice experience. Ah! Then the man now said, oh, your, your, your father stole a bicycle. Gave the guy the download of how the father ate rice and died, and he knows that it was rice the father was eating when life left him. So how do we do this? He said, take this bicycle, go and buy a bicycle, give to the son, because the, the man that brought the beer had died. So go and give the son of that man a bicycle. So he went, because it is theft that was the cause. You won't pray in tongues and pray it away. Oh my. Are you there? So restitution was the answer. They restored the bicycle to the son of that man and instantly the spirit that was bringing the affliction lost jurisdiction. After he obeyed and he went to meet the pastor, the pastor was eating rice, so they had to share rice. That was how he was brought back to the club of rice eaters. May you eat rice in the name of Jesus. He was brought back. So the first thing that we need to look at is what we call inheritance. Inheritance is one of the factors that can implicate you. The ground that the devil has secured has nothing to do with your own life. It has everything to do with something, a garbage, a liability that you inherited. And that can become a premise of negative legality upon which Satan can stand to manipulate your destiny. Remember, remember, 
Remember that this physical world came out, was given birth to from where? From the invisible world. And any man that has a handle on how to manipulate the invisible world will dominate the physical world. The second thing that can lend an opportunity for manipulation around your life is what we call iniquity. First is inheritance. Second is iniquity. Iniquity. And iniquity, let me give you a very simple definition of iniquity. So that uh, the one you can remember, not necessarily a, a theological one, right? Iniquity is when, basic definition of iniquity is when a man uses his will against the will of God. Uses his will against the will of God. It is an insult in the sight of God that has grievous con consequences that are transgenerational. And one of, one of those scenarios where the will of man is used against the will of God is in idolatry. 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 A certain brother is a churchgoer. A churchgoer is not very serious with his Christian life. And then he died mysteriously. When he died mysteriously, some women came and said, he cannot die like a chicken. And the evidence that they brought that he cannot die like a chicken was that it was his grandfather that translated the hymn book to their language. And because of that, he has credit on his life. Do you know that on the basis of that credit, they pleaded with heaven and the guy's life was restored? You know why? There was an inheritance in his lineage, an inheritance of goodwill. They used that to plead their case in the court of heaven and heaven. You see, raising the dead is a tricky matter. We will not talk about it today. We we'll, we'll need to bring some evidences first about 12 evidences before we start talking about raising the dead. It's a very tricky matter. One of the things that can enhance it is your inheritance. How many of you still remember the woman that died, is it Dockers in the Bible? And they brought evidences that no, this type should not, no, no, this one cannot be killed like a chicken. She must live and fulfill her days. And there were evidences that were brought forth and the apostle Paul standing on those evidences pleaded with the court of heaven and a verdict for her release was passed in the heavenlies. It takes a lot of spiritual intelligence to be able to reverse something that has already been done. During the course of this lecture, if we have time, because it is my, I've been studying debt for some while, for a while. And I found out that most of the burials we have done, we buried people that had no business with debt, with the grave. All of these short changes in lifespan that took place are based on manipulations that were done from the realm of the spirit. Are you there? And I'm studying the, techn the technology by which we can reverse unauthorized deaths. People that appeared in heaven before their time. Are you still, are you still with me? At least I will give you the tricks. Eh? And if you happen to stumble upon a situation where you, you perceive that this debt is unauthorized, there are a few things you should do. If it doesn't work, then let's go for burial. But don't go for burial without trying. The devil's assignment is to steal, is to kill, is to destroy. That's what it does. If he shows up, you might see him with dark bubbles, goggles. He's not trying to take a picture. He doesn't want to do selfie. The reason why he showed up is because he wants to kill. Exactly. So there's this angle of iniquity. There's this angle of iniquity. And I've seen very diligent pastors in ministry, very diligent pastors, and with all the labor, 25 years, 30 years, there is no breakthrough. <laughs> it is not because they are slothful. It's not because they don't know how to pray. It's not because they don't understand the Bible. But there are many other matters that can be overlooked that can be the reason for which their destiny is being manipulated. There's nothing wrong with starting small, but there's everything wrong with remaining small. Everything is wrong with it. Because the Bible says, though thy beginning be small, thy later end shall greatly, he said a little one will become a thousand, a small one will become a strong nation.
So God, the approved way of beginning is small, but as your capacity in the spirit begins to increase, your stature begins to increase, your faithfulness before the Lord begins to increase, He begins to give you more measures and more measures and more measures. That is supposed to be the story of everyone that is faithful in the labors of God. How I wish it was that simple. There are other factors that can manipulate outcomes. If there is a record of iniquity in the lineage, Satan can use that as an argument. Before I round up, number three, your own personal commit, commitment to sin can become a platform that Satan can use to manipulate your destiny. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. One. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Then he gave us a, a commentary in verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. The garments that Joshua was wearing gave Satan jurisdiction even before the presence of God. Satan was standing to resist him. The only reason why God had the authority to rebuke Satan, are you there? Is because of a statement made in that scripture. He said, is this not a brand propped out of the fire? You know the meaning of that? It means that because of his sin, God allowed him to be plunged into judgment. That fire, there is judgment. So he had finished the requirement of judgment. That is why God is in his own right to rebuke. You can no longer resist him because he has survived the judgment that is due for the trespass that he committed. The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Many times when God allows you to go through seasons of judgment, it is so that he can remove the legality upon which Satan is standing to resist your destiny, to manipulate your destiny. May you become courageous not to give Satan any place in your life. May you. No matter how sin is presented to you, may you find courage. May you find that courage to break loose because Satan is seeking an occasion to resist your destiny. I was told of an evangelist those days. Oh, there, were, there were radios, but there were no televisions those, those, those days. He used to hold a radio program. And when he preaches, he will ask people to put their hands on radios. And all kinds of healings break out across the country. Radio. Radio became an instrument through which the healing balm of Jesus could be transmitted. He was a legend. A man that God had bestowed fine grace upon after a while, he became silent and he did not die. Someone was there when he was confessing that his spiritual sap has been drained by women. He had sap. It was drained. And Satan was standing to resist him. Please help me tell your neighbor, life is spiritual. One of my covenant friends is grandfather was the custodian of a masquerade in my tribe called Ukuboku. Please don't laugh, don't laugh. I don't even know. Is it that they ran out of names that they, they now, <laughs> it's only strange names they have to give. His grandfather was a custodian of the Uboku masquerade. His dad born again and his dad never allowed him go to close to any of those traditional things. But from the age of nine, he started seeing Uboku appear to him in his dream. That's an inheritance. The man I'm talking about is a great preacher. 
So one of those days, he now said, Okpoko is still, do you know we had to travel from Akodi? Went to all the houses that they stayed in, in a certain state and broke those powers. It's not in the dream. We went, I, I said, me, as busy as you think I am, I had time because that, my friend, is my man. But Okpoko, Okpoko. He told me that he slept on the bed one day and woke up from under the bed. Upoku had... I'm talking of a tongue, a, vi a violent tongue talker. Woke up from under the bed many times. Upoku had transported him from on top of the bed and put him on. May the Lord give us understanding in the name of Jesus. So when we went for that word round in prayer and priesthood, we cut off that inheritance. Because I couldn't imagine how the world would be if something happens to that, my friend. No. We have to stop preaching and, and attend to that matter. And when we went, the Lord honored our voice. That legality was cut off. New seasons opened for him. So the matter we want to deal with here is the issue of possible negative inheritance. Can we reject that inheritance? For if any man be in Christ, my inheritance can only come from Christ. That inheritance, that liability that has been added to the spiritual infrastructure around your life, can you confront it by the power that is in the blood of Jesus? This is not the way my name will be written. As you cry, cry for your children also. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.